Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad. And it's so glad for all of you that are out there today watching. I pray the favor of the Lord be upon you today in Jesus name. I don't know about anybody else, but the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his grace, his love. Amen. And I pray that you do too. We got a good lesson today, short lesson, but a good lesson. Uh, talking about the gifts for the temple. We're still in the book of Ezra here in our Sunday school lesson. We've been going through a series of uh, uh, stories in the book of Ezra talking about, you know, laying the foundation, building the temple and giving God glory. And now we're at the part where they're get, they're putting the gifts. They're bringing the gifts for the temple because they understand and recognize that we should be willing to give generously of our time and our talents to the Lord. Giving your gifts to the temple is an act of worship. Yeah, it actually is an act of worship. So we're going to be talking about that today coming out of the book of Ezra chapter 8 verses 24 through 30. So before we get into it, y'all already know how we do. Let's go before the throne and then we'll get right into the word of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for yet another day. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. God, thank you for your favor. God, I pray right now for each and every person under the sound of my voice, God, that you would open their hearts and their minds to be receptive to your word. God, impart in us your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And it is so in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. I pray that everybody has had an awesome weekend. I know I have been running like a leaky faucet since Monday of last week. Amen. Uh, just, you know, with preparation, um, being in our new facility, which is so exciting. And if you are looking for a place to worship, you come on down to Harvest of Faith. We're located in Aurora 888 at South Edgelong in Aurora, Illinois, 888 South Edgelon in Aurora, Illinois. God bless you today. But today we'll be talking about the gifts. So the first six chapters that we have read um, in the book of Ezra record how the exiled people of the Southern turn to Jerusalem. So now that that time period has passed and now they've gotten settled and everything it's done. Now their next order of biz to bring the gifts of God or for God into the temple. So we're going to start off reading uh, the first couple of verses, verses 24 through 27, and then we'll stop and we'll go ahead and we'll expound a little bit more on the scripture. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, I appointed 12 leaders of the priests. Sherebiah and Hashabiah and 10 other priests to be in charge of transporting the silver, the gold, the gold bowls and the other items that the king, his council, his official and all the people of Israel had presented for the temple of God. I weighed the treasure as I gave it to them and found the totals to be as follows: 24 tons of silver. 7,500 pounds of silver articles, 7,500 pounds of gold. Somebody say that's a lot of resources. So here it is, verse 20, verse 27. 20 gold bowls equal in value to 1,000 gold coins, two fine articles of polished bronze as precious gold. Oh my God, that's a lot. That's a lot to unpack right there. So right here we see Ezra the priest had led this second group uh, back to Judah and Jerusalem approximately 80 years after the first group had returned. And even though he knew that God had promised to protect his people, he still, as we remember, we read in times past, he still ordered everyone to fast and to pray for the Lord's protection. So that way they would be for sure covered because there was a monumental undertaking that they had to go through. And that was going with them on a long journey. They had a long and tedious journey ahead of them. There was danger that was on that journey that they were facing all kinds of things that could have gone wrong. So as he wanted to make sure, Ezra wanted to make sure that they were prayed up, 
that they had fasted, that they had really let the Lord know, Lord, we need your protection. I know that you've already said that we would have it, but God, we just want to let you know that we seeking after you. We're going to fast. We're going to pray that you would continue to have your protection over us. So as a priest, um, Ezra knew that the God's blessings are appropriated through what? Prayer. He said, in order for us to ensure that we're blessed, we got to pray. We got to talk to the Lord. So now that they had done all the preparatory work, it was time to carry out the service of the Lord. It was time to get the job done. So in that, therefore, Ezra had appointed 12 leaders of the priests. You had Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and 10 other priests to be in charge of transporting all the gold, all the silver, all the bowls, all the other items. So he put them in charge of transporting everything that they were going to need to put in to the temple. So, and there was a lot of stuff as we just read. There was so much gold, it would probably make us, our eyes buck, buck out our heads like, wow. But God provided them with so many different resources and so many different things that they had no other choice but to dedicate those things to the temple, to take these things to the temple. They didn't take them home. They didn't do like some people would have done and said, okay, I'm going to take a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit of this in the bag. I'm going to set this to the side and then I'll give God whatever's left. But no, they brought everything that they had. They brought everything that they had in their possession to the temple. And in order to make sure that everything got there in a timely manner, in order, Ezra made sure that he appointed the men of God. He said, okay, I'm going to appoint y'all because if you a true man of God, y'all the priests, I shouldn't have to worry about y'all stealing. He said, if I, if I appointed you know, maybe 12 people out of, you know, the tribe of Judah, you know, or or, 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 or the children of Israel, maybe I would have had to worry about, you know, something coming up missing. But he, he put them in charge, the men of God, in charge of all of the resources. So they were in charge of a vast treasury. It wasn't no small change. It was 24 tons of silver, 7,500 pounds of silver utensils, 7,500 pounds of gold, 20 bowls equal in value to a thousand gold coins, all of this stuff. So they were in charge of that. That was That's a lot of pressure. Hey, man, they like, man, look, Lord, they, they we got offerings down at the church. Uh, you know, I could use a little bit in a couple of these gold bowls, God. I could use, you know, a little bit of these resources here now. I take it to the pawn shop and see what happens. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But they were entrusted with this. And what was interesting about it, when they were transporting all of these things to the temple, they didn't have military escort. It wasn't like before when they were going to into back to Jerusalem where they had military escort from the king. They did not have any military escort. So now you're traveling with all of this gold, all of this silver, you bling blinging, y'all standing out like a sore thumb and there is no protection, physical protection around them, no military support. They were on a dangerous route back to Judah and Jerusalem. Like they didn't take a peaceful and 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 serene route. They didn't they didn't take the suburb this uh the suburban route. No, they they went through the hood. They had to walk through some dangerous ground in order to get this stuff back without a military escort. And how you know that God will protect you when you're doing his will is that they were able to arrive back at their destination without being robbed without getting jacked, nobody got killed, nobody got hurt. That lets you know that it doesn't matter if you have people that have your back or not, military, your friends, whatever it is, God is always going to protect you when you do right. He's going to protect you when you're doing his will, when you're doing his work. People may be on your left side, on your right side, trying to bring you down and trying to destroy you or trying to kill you, but no weapon that is formed against you will be able to prosper. It probably was some folk that probably saw them passing by and wanted to jack them, but to something, but, but God's spirit probably made them go the other way, or it was a barrier around them that they didn't even know was there that the enemy couldn't get through. So therefore, they were able to get everything back to in order to dedicate to the temple safe and sound. God said, I need everything to come back with y'all. I don't need y'all getting robbed. I don't need anything crazy to happen. I need y'all to bring everything back. So to ensure that that happens, I'm going to put a hedge of protection around you. Aren't you glad about the hedge of protection 
that the Lord has put around us. I thank God that he literally protects us. Think about this, y'all. He protects us from danger seen and unseen. Think about the way they travel. Think about the dangerous route that they had to travel back with all of that valuable merchandise. And yet there were probably dangers that they did not even see that God had protected them from and they didn't even know it. That's why I love God is because I know that at some point in my life, he protected me from something that I wasn't paying attention to. Whew, my God, he protected us from something that we didn't even know was coming against us, but he blocked it. And that's what makes God God. That's why we love him. That's why we praise him. That's why the children of Israel had no problem giving him worship. They had no problem building the temple, laying the foundation, giving God praise. Even though folk were crying and mad and sad, they had no problem because they understood that if it wasn't for his love and his protection, that they would not have been where they were at that particular moment. So let's continue to read on verses 28 through 30 here. And we almost through it says, and I said to these priests, you and these treasures have been set apart as holy to the Lord. The silver and gold is a voluntary offering for the Lord, for our God, for the God of our ancestors. Verse 29, guard these treasures well until you present them to the leading priests and the Levites and the leaders of Israel who will weigh them at the storerooms of the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. So the priests and the Levites accepted the task of transporting these treasures of silver and gold to the temple of our God in Jerusalem. So with this declaration, ye are holy unto the Lord, the vessels are holy also. With that declaration, Ezra commissioned the leaders and priests and the offerings that they carried into service for God. So he commissioned them. He said, look, you all are holy. These items are holy. So therefore, we shouldn't have no problems. <laughs> Amen. Just like we just talked about. So they consecrated themselves and the gifts that they had. And to consecrate means to just simply be set apart for the sole purpose and service of God. Every last one of us who are in the body of believers should be consecrated and should be consecrating ourselves to God. We are all set apart for the master's use. When you come into the fold, it is no longer about you. I know that's a tough pill to swallow because we got a lot of people to think everything is about them. But when you come into the fold, it is no longer about you, but it is about Christ. It is about God's agenda. It is about his will for your life, whatever his will is, not my will. No longer my will, no longer what I want, not my will. thine will be done. So we need to be consecrated for the sole purpose of just our service to God. So every object in the temple was to God. They didn't just bring the stuff in there and start setting it up, but they dedicated every item that they had, letting him know, God, we're saying it, we're giving a, de a declarative statement right now. We're saying that this all belongs to you. It doesn't belong to us. You're the giver of gifts. You're the blessing, not us. And we did the number before we even moved to our new facility that we're in right now, we went in on a Friday night and we went forth in prayer. We laid hands on the walls. We anointed chairs. We anointed the altar. We dedicated that entire building to God because we understood. We understand that we didn't get here. We didn't get here because we're so good, but we got here because God is good. Don't forget whatever God blesses you with, whatever he gives you, don't forget to consecrate it and dedicate it back to him. Consecrate only what you have, but consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. Just like the children of Israel did here. So also demonstrates how the king of Persia even obeyed and served God. This was a king that had no business even thinking about the God that we serve, but yet because God is who he is, he entered into this king's heart and caused this king to give the children of Israel everything that they needed in order for them to get where they needed to be. 
So with his statement describing how the Lord stirred his spirit, the king was being placed in a position by God to set the stage for Ezra to return to Jerusalem. The king admitted, he said, I feel something. Something on the inside of me is making me is, is making me feel different. It's making me want to make different decisions and different choices. He said, I'm stirred. I, 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 I got to let them go. And not only am I going to let them go back home, but I'm going to give them protection and I'm going to give them the resources to ensure that not only they get home, but they got enough resources to build the temple. And I'm going I'm to allow the haters that don't even like them to have to sow into them. God is going to allow some folk that don't even like you to sow into your business. They ain't even going to know why they're doing it. They just going to do it. They're going to sow into your ministry. They don't even know why they're doing it. They can't stand the pastor, can't stand the choir, but they sowing into the ministry. They don't even know why they're doing it. Because God ultimately is the one in control of all of us. He can use whomever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants in order to get his will across. So the king continued his declaration of obedience to God by saying, the Lord of heaven have given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has put me in charge of building his house in Jerusalem. So the king recognized that even though I'm in charge of all of that I survey, he said, I would have none of this if God didn't put me here. He understood that God had put him in the right place at the right time to do what he needed him to do. God's timing is perfect. God's timing is immaculate. Let me tell you, he may not come when you want him. And I know we all know the song, a beautiful song, but it's true. He may not come when you want him, but I guarantee you, God is always going to be on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. I'm about to get happy off that. He's an on time God. He did everything in perfect timing. He allowed this king to understand that all that he surveyed belonged to God. He said, I'm here only by God's grace, only because God told me to be here because he used me. He wants to use me to build his house. He used a Persian king to build his house in Jerusalem. You can't tell me what God can't do. You can't tell me about the power of our God. Don't even try to, don't even attempt to try to sway me. You can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. So the question that we have to ask ourselves today is, are we dedicating ourselves to God? Are we dedicating ourselves to his work? Are we dedicating ourselves to his temple? If you answered no to any of those, you ought to pray tonight, pray today that the Lord would fill your heart, that the Lord would fill your mind with his wisdom, that he would renew, that you would renew your relationship with him today, that you would consecrate, rededicate yourself to him today. I know the Lord has blessed you. I know the Lord has blessed some of y'all out there listening right now. Have you consecrated? Have you dedicated whatever it is back to God? That house that you prayed for that you're now living in, sitting in your living room right now. Have you dedicated that house to God? That car that you didn't have when you was catching the bus, catching Ubers, but now the Lord, have you dedicated that to God? Your marriage, your family that you so long and desired to have because you didn't have one when you were coming up? Have you dedicated your family to God? Do a spiritual inventory today and ask yourself, everything that I have, all the blessings that I have, have I consecrated them to God? Have I consecrated myself to him? That is our Sunday school lesson today. Very short lesson, but nonetheless powerful lesson. I pray that it affected somebody in a positive, in a spiritual way, that it would change your mindset and change the way you look at things and maybe cause that spark that you needed to happen in order to rededicate yourself to God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this Sunday school lesson. God, we thank you for the example that I, Ezra left on what we have to do 
in order to dedicate ourselves to you. God, we say thank you and we give you praise for every resource that we have. God, we have nothing unless you're with us. God, I pray that you never depart from our presence. God, I pray that you be with us, God, in the midnight hour, every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. God, don't leave us alone. Continue to follow us. Let your goodness and your mercy continue to follow us all the days of your life and help us to be mindful to forever, to give you praise and glory, to give you reverence, to never forget that everything we have is because of you. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Harvest of Faith, God bless you. I'll see y'all in a few minutes. It's going to be an awesome service today. Today is our youth service. I'm excited about it. Amen. God bless you. All of my Facebook, YouTube listeners, I pray God's favor upon you and you're going to reap the harvest God promised you. And you're going to take back everything the devil stole. God bless you. We'll see you next week if it be the will of the Lord.